Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you are with us live or watching the replay. It's wonderful to be with you and a very special welcome to my gorgeous guest, Isidore. Welcome, Isidore. Well, thank you. Thank you, Naomi. I'm very excited to be here with you. Uh, I'm excited to have you with us all the way from Brussels in Belgium, everybody. Um, and Isidore is an amazing artist. I'm going to give you a quick intro about her in a second. But first, let me just invite you to please let us know if you're with us. Give us a little wave, say hi, um, and let us know if you can see us and hear us okay. And if you have any questions at any stage, we would love for you to participate. So please feel free to drop those in the comments underneath the video, wherever you are watching. So that might be inside our Brand Stars Facebook group, on my Facebook business page, or on LinkedIn. So you might not see each other's comments, but we will see them and we will follow along. And if you're watching the replay, you are also welcome to leave us questions or comments. And Isidore and I will come back and we will have a look and we will keep in touch with you. So with that, let me just introduce this beautiful lady. So Isidore is an abstract artist and a creative rainbow mama of two gorgeous sons. And she was born and raised in Brussels, Belgium, but her love of travel and life experiences that included working for Doctors Without Borders for 18 years, make her feel more like a citizen of the world. Love this, Isa. Um, and she has been an, on, on an exploratory journey into painting for more than 30 years. And her abstract, dreamy and vibrant scenes are inseparable from the experiences that she's going through and also how nature inspires her to express them. It's her way of acknowledging the creative rainbow mama that she is with her joys and her wounds, the scars of her childhood, the pain of her depression episodes, and the magic of womanhood. Beautiful, is that? The clouds of her burnout also from working in the corporate world and the skies of her successes. So with her paintings and her courses, Isa's wish is that you come to the space as well by allowing the creative rainbow woman in you to let go of the big and small concerns so that you can nourish the most important things in your life. Her courses encourage you to embrace your creativity, release stress and light up your soul with the joy of creating, playing, exploring, and also experiencing pride and freedom and self-confidence. Don't you love this, ladies? I do. I'm so inspired by you, Isa, and I've been so, so inspired, like watching your journey of everything unfolding for you. So thank you for that. And may I ask you to kick off by just sharing a bit about your journey and what has brought you to do all these beautiful things that you do today? Yeah. Well, I was born, as you said, I was born in Brussels. That was 56 years ago um, in a family of seven i'm the last of seven i've got four i've got four sisters two brothers and um to tell the truth i wasn't a wanted baby so i kind of quickly understood that the best for me was to be brave be good keep quiet and have good grades which i did i was a very good girl for for the most part of my childhood and early adulthood and um so what I did when I was a kid, my, my, my go-to activities were reading. I read a lot. I, I was drawing, I was painting, I was dancing. A lot of, you know, um, individual and, and activities. And so at the time that I became an adult um, and had to choose for um, studies, high school studies, I wanted to become an architect. I loved designing houses, and that was also something that came out in my drawings. And um, my brother, my older brother, who was an architect, told me, well, you know, um, it's not a good time to become an architect because the market is not good. You won't make a living out of it. So you better be off choosing something else. And I was like, choosing something else, what am I going to do? And I, I went on studying finance, of all things, finance, just because I thought that it would give me more opportunity afterwards. So I studied finance, started my career in finance, in a bank, and um, I was kind of, you know, getting a bit hyped up by the atmosphere at the time was 
it was really in to be seen like the golden boy on the stock market. And I was kind of in that atmosphere. But at some point, and we are back in 1990, um, at some point, I was feeling that it wasn't my thing at all because I was working for a private bank. Uh, and of course, the, the idea and the mission of the bank was to get more money to people that were already substantially rich. And at the same time, in 1990, it was the beginning of this, the first Gulf War. And my other brother, who's in the Belgian Navy, was commanding a ship in the uh, Persian Gulf. And um, it was difficult for me to understand how was the meaning of what, what, what I was doing. And especially in the morning briefings, when we were like, um, shall we buy shares on the stock market in London? Shall we sell in New York? It will all depend on how many casualties that the Americans will do uh, in Kuwait and stuff like that. And I was like, uh -uh, um, um, I cannot stay here. It's, it, wasn't, it wasn't right. So I kind of um, <laughs> made a total, you know, shift and I decided to go and work for Dr. Wizard Borders. So um, I'm not a doctor. As I said, I studied finance. So um, I could nevertheless give a hand in terms of logistics, in terms of human resources. And they sent me on a two-year mission to Mozambique. Uh, and that was a time when Mozambique was still at war. And I really, although it was, I mean, really tough and difficult, I loved it. I loved it. And when I came back after that mission, I went on working with Doctors Without Borders, but at the headquarters here in Brussels. And I, I kept on managing projects from the headquarters with, with several travels to um, our different missions. See, I'm still saying our as if I was still working with Doctors Without Borders. It has been my passion for 18 years because I could so much relate to um, the values and the mission. And I met wonderful people who are still my best friends. And um, yeah, that, that was something that really nurtured me. At some point, um, it was there that I actually met my husband. We got married, um, I, and we decided to have kids. And after the birth of my first kid, um, I went into a very severe postnatal depression. Uh, when I say very severe, I'm talking, I'm not talking about baby blues, I'm talking about really having to stop working. And I nearly had to be hospitalized because I had suicidal thoughts. So, uh, it was a very challenging experience for me to become a mother and um, probably, I mean, the hindsight, uh, with hindsight, I can tell that it was because my biggest value is freedom and I could feel that having a baby, having kids was putting that value at stake in some, in some ways. And um, it was also revealing to me some areas where I was, where I was feeling inadequate. And it, it has been a very long healing path, but I healed. I got a second baby without any issue uh, with, with that baby. So I have my two beautiful sons. Uh, but then after that, I felt that it was really important for me not to travel that much with Doctors Without Borders and to, to get into a job where I would uh, be, that would, that would be less demanding. So I changed, I uh, went into um, different other jobs. I'm not giving all details, it doesn't, doesn't have any importance, but uh, in one of the, um, the jobs that I had, I had a first burnout, and that was 2010. I took some four weeks leave, um, made some work on myself, digged into my values, digged into my, you know, the stuff that I liked, how do, what do I need to change in my life? 
it was an interesting work, but the future <laughs> proved me to haven't done the work deeply enough. And uh, three years ago, um, I was still working in corporate in another company and I made a second burnout. And that time, at that time, that was really, I mean, that was really something else. Um, I got, my hands got paralyzed. I couldn't sing properly. I couldn't speak properly. It was, I mean, I really had to stop because my body was telling me, yeah, you, you're not in the place that you're aligned with. So at that point, I, when I stopped working, I did what uh, I had always wanted to do, and that was painting. I would still paint at the time. I was still painting on and off, but not very much. And when, when I had to stop because of the burnout, I started painting every day, and um, that's how I reconnected really with with myself, with what I liked. I found my confidence back, and to make a long story short, uh, some people asked me to learn the technique that at the time I was um, painting with, and I started tinching. And from there, I really set up, you know, a site activity uh, with teaching classes in person and also uh, making more of my of my art. And that's where I am today. Oh, wonderful, Isidore. I find your story captivating. I really do. And there's so many things that resonate with me as well. And I just want to say hi to Anjana. She's with us. Hello, Anjana. Thank you so much for joining us. And Anjana is a wonderful lady also, and she works with women in midlife as well. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll have quite a bit in common in terms of what you do. Um, I relate to various things right from the beginning of your story where you talk about being a good girl and well behaved and doing what you told and getting good grades and it was so much the story for me and then also uh, I also ended up studying actually you won't even believe it but I went into a science degree first just because there was a bursary available to teach physics and maths you're crazy um, and then into computers computers which was also um, just something I sort of tumbled into so I'd also been very out of touch with my creativity and yes, my highest freedom also, uh, I mean, my highest value also is freedom. So I totally relate to that. So mm -hmm. I have um, not had children along the way, but also many adventures. And with Dave, we also got completely involved in conservation projects and things and have traveled mm -hmm. to Mozambique many times. So I relate to all of this. Um, and I have been blessed to be able to start our business soon enough that I didn't have to go through a burnout experience, but I can totally imagine yeah. the um being pushed in that direction especially through working in corporate as you say yeah. so what you've really magically beautifully been able to do is re get in touch again with your creative soul and i love that and so can i ask you just to share for the women um watching so what what are the benefits that you've seen um for us in really tapping into our creativity and also daring to be who we truly are. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know that there are lots of studies that show that uh, creativity, being engaged in creative activities, is good for the health. Right? It has been proved that it uh, improves your um, immune system, that it decreases your blood pressure, that it um, decreases dementia risks. And um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's been proved, it's, it's a fact. Now, um, what I realize is that when we are like feeling off, when we feel that we are not aligned with ourselves, we feel that we are unhappy or that we are not at ease or that we are, you know, always looking for better days or for um yes for, for ways to get um, more out of life and what i what i noticed is that that happens when you have an, an imbalance between your skills your needs 
and your um, values. And, you know, because at some point in life, and especially in, the, in your profession or in your career, you use your skills, you try to find a place where you can um, align with the values of the company, and, um, but you rarely pay attention to your actual needs. And I'm not talking about you know, your, your money needs, I'm talking about what really fulfills your soul. And if there's an imbalance in between the three, sometimes you can cope with that for, you know, for a short period of time because of different um, life contexts or situations, but you cannot, you cannot sustain that for a long time. And if you do, um, if you do live in a situation or work in a situation where your skills, your needs and your values are not on balance, then you become to feel unhappy and then you become to feel uh, sad and unhealthy and then your body shows you that it's time to stop and reflect. And how creativity can um, help us in this situation is to identify our needs. I think that it's quite easy to identify our skills. We have lots of coaches that can be there and help us identify our skills. I think the same goes for values. I think that we women have a hard time to really identify our needs. What is it that we need in life to feel that we are alive? And that, that is, that's when creativity comes in. That's when if you engage into creative activities, you can really discover what it is that you need because you will feel the, the effect that it will have on you, on your mind, your body and your soul. I couldn't agree with you more. Absolute music to my ears is a mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Um, so powerful and so incredibly true. And like I say, I went through that experience as well, working in corporate and feeling just desolate inside and desperate to find the joy. Um, and part of it was because, so I'm almost your age as well. I'm 54 now. And at school, we were not... And in our day, uh, creativity was just not encouraged. It was yeah. it was very much like a second thing. If you could do maths and physics, that's what you did, and no option really. So it took me such a long time. I, I think I was like about forty by the time I really got in touch with my creativity and realized that it's the greatest source of joy in my life. Um, and it boggles my mind that I wasn't able to do that before. Um, Finally made the live one. Someone says, woohoo, although late. Hi, fantastic to have you with us. Drop me your name. I can't see who you are. Um, so, so is it? Now, I'm fascinated by the rainbow woman archetype. Yeah. And you say such beautiful. I love your emails, by the way. So anybody watching, just sign up for Isa. On, we'll give you her website details lately and, uh, later in the chat. And sign up for that. She does beautifully inspiring emails. And the one that you did recently, you, you were sharing about the Rainbow Woman. So can I ask you to explain a bit more about that? Um, because I'd love for our viewers also to get in touch with the Rainbow Woman inside. Oh, it's Chantal. Thanks, Chantal. She says, better late than never. No, you're not that late. And Nikki Thompson, Nikki, awesome. Yeah. Yay, thank you. Nikki's another artist. Yay. In fact, Nikki introduced me to you, Isa. So yeah. wonderful. Shout out to you, Nikki. Um, so can I ask you to share that, Isa, the Rainbow Woman archetype? Oh, yeah, because, you know, well, we're talking about archetypes. So it's it's more like, you know, talking about general um, features of the woman energy. And um, some traditions um, explain that uh, the women use their energy in two different ways. You have the women that are nurturing women, and then you have women that are the, uh, the um, rainbow women. The nurturing woman is the one that um, will make sure that 
people and communities are taken care of. She's the one that will nurture the, the child. She's, um, she's the one who will put food on, food on the table. She will um, take care of her husband or partner needs. She will make sure that she attends uh, the coffee meeting at, uh, at school. She will make sure that the fridge is full and that she drives the kids to their sports activities. And thanks to the nurturing women, we are who we are today. I mean, it's, it's because nurturing women exist that our species exists, right? And it's kind of, in, in, until not so long ago, that archetype of woman was really the one that was um, glorified in our societies. Um, and I really thought that when I became a mom, I needed to be a nurturing woman. I mean, because I'm a mom, I need to be a nurturing woman. And that was such a battle within me to be that to be that kind of woman. And I fought so hard thinking that I should I should do something else. I, I should do better. I could do better. Otherwise I'm not a good man. Um, and and even you know in in the corporate world, I mean in the team there's always someone who's taking care of Oh, you know, it's it's that colleague's birthday, and she would she would bring on a cake, and I was like, how come she she thinks of bringing a cake, and she has the time to cook a cake, and I'm more like, I'm unaware of all those stuff, and that's why when I read about those those archetype, I was so. Uh, relieved to understand that there's this archetype of the rainbow, the rainbow woman. And the rainbow woman, she's the one who makes sure that she creates a life for herself that inspires her soul so that she can inspire other people. And she's the one who will, you know, take on challenges and most of the time she will defend causes. Uh, and she she will really defend the causes sometimes to even lose herself in the cause and the mission and the values that she was she's going to defend but she she will really endorse that role to be a trailblazer you know to show the way to be to be the the light in the dark and to to get creative and her motto is you know be playful um be a child, have fun, and make sure that you you keep your vision alive. And when I realized that it's okay, <laughs> it's okay, you're you're a rainbow woman. And and I added the the creative dimension to it because um it's my way of being a rainbow woman, because my way to, you know, to show the light and to show the way is to get it done with my hands and with my paintings. And I'm thinking that, um, so there's no, there's no, you know, nurturing women and, uh, and uh, rainbow women. We are, we are both of them. But some, some of us are more rainbow women like me, and some of us are more nurturing women like others and and at some point we have to find the balance there too oh i love this isadore and i have a sense that there are many many rainbow women among us and mm -hmm. and, and as you say though the combination can you hear the hardy dar sorry that's the joburg birds <laughs> um <laughs> As you say, there's that element of nurturing, I'd say, also in all of us, even, even me, though I'm not a mom, um, very much like in my marriage, for example, but the Rainbow Woman archetype just calls to me so much. Um, and I see so much value in what you're saying and what we all are able to contribute to the world through mm -hmm. being able to find that inspiration in our own souls um, and magnificent and I just you just radiate this is a and I love that I, I see it in all of your posts 
Ladies Follow is on Instagram. She's amazing. Um, and she does amazing live streams as well. Um, so I love that. And so I want to ask you as well, in your experience, so I know that you teach live um, classes, art classes in, in your studio, gorgeous studio where you are now. Um, and you, you've really helped quite a lot of women with, with this creative transformation and really you know, getting in touch with themselves. So what, what in your experience are the typical blocks? I mean, you mentioned now as well, we do, we often don't put ourselves first, but mm -hmm. so, so what do you see as the typical blocks to women really stepping into their confidence and their creativity and daring to be who they are, as you, as you so beautifully say um, on your yeah. website. Can you share that with us? Yeah. Well, you know, the first block is um, the person that says, I'm not a creative person. You know, I've been told that I couldn't go outside the lines. Um, it's impossible for me. I can't even draw stick persons, you know. Um, well, the idea of what it is to be creative is sometimes put onto a pedestal. Like, you know, you have creative people and then you have non-creative people. Like, it's a good fairy that was there on your cradle and who said, you are going to be creative and this one is not going to be creative. It's not like that. Everyone is creative. <laughs> and it's... It's really the being creative is the ability to express oneself. It's nothing more than that. And it's also the way that you create, that you are expressing yourself. For example, um, you can be very creative in cooking. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm terrible at cooking, but for example, my son, <laughs> my son, he, just opens opens the cupboards and then he puts everything on the on the on the table and then he yeah he just creates something out of nothing and that's that's being creative and if he couldn't even see after that how he did it and i think that is the fact of um and you know that always put that at the end of my emails i, I i'm saying be bold and shine you need to be bold you, you need to be um, wanting to explore, to, um, to be curious, to ask questions, to try, you know, and, and whatever the results, it's just like being in the shoes of the students who discover stuff in the, for the first time or just as a child. You know, when you put, when you put a pencil in the, hand, in the hand of a child, he doesn't look at the pencils thinking, okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to draw. It's, it's just that he's having fun drawing or painting. He doesn't ask you, is it nice? Because if, the, if you say, it's, it's not like that. It's just how you feel and, and how you are ready to explore. And in the, in the class, it's, it's the first block that they have. Am I a creative person? I think I'm not a creative person. So that's, that's really the, I mean, the main block that they have. And then the comparison. And, yeah. and that's, you know, you have one that will not start the exercise and, and then she will look, you know, right and left. And then, you know, because she, she's afraid of appearing silly or appearing like she's not capable. But everyone is, and everyone is uh, with its own ways. And I might have, you know, 10 different people in the room and they will come out with 10 different interpretation of the exercise. So, and that was something that they, they told me. It's, um, there's one thing I learned with your course is that I, I needed to stop comparing myself. And I was, like yeah because you you have the tendency to look over your shoulder to each other's work and she said to me not only that i learned how to stop comparing myself as a woman to other women and i was like i mean that was really something that was so aligned with what i wanted but unexpected and 
And that comes with the time, not later than yesterday. I mean, the students came in and, and you know, here in Brussels, it's cold, it's pouring rain, we have floods everywhere. And people are less fed up with the, with the weather. And, and on top of that, they were tired with, with their work and they didn't want to come. So they're a bit like heavy when they in, enter the studio. And after three hours, they're like, is it already three hours? And, I, and they are so pumped up, you know, and they, they, that's what it, what, what it is that if they agree and accept to just make that first step beyond the fear of um, not performing well, yeah. then, it, then it's, then, yeah, those two blocks, yeah amazing so true and so powerful is and i just love the work that you do to help women break through this and i just feel it i, I relate to it so much in myself i don't know if i've told you this story but i actually and so growing up i was completely out of touch with my creativity completely and um a little bit before i met my husband i think i was about 24 um maybe 25 i had the one and only um session with a um uh, a, a fortune teller um, in, I was living in Cape Town and I went with a friend of mine, a girlfriend of mine and I was like, oh, you know, let's just go and see what she says. And she was a lovely little lady um, and she said to me throughout this whole session, she kept saying, you are so creative. You have such a creative streak. You're so creative. And I was already like 24, 25 and I, I was like, what is she talking about? Like, I, I just, it, it meant nothing to me, Isa. I promise you. I was like, so I was in computers at the time. I was a computer programmer. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I should go and like study something. So I went and did a, a diploma in interior decorating because I had the time and I didn't know what else to do. I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll just try this. And it took me another, you know, 10 years and more to discover the joy of photography and video. And then everything just like opened up for me. And it's a completely different life. Yeah. So um, what I wanted to ask you is, so with the blogs and your actual process, can you share a little bit about, you know, I, I mean, I just love, I, I relate so much to what you're saying about helping women be bold and shine. And, you know, it's like my mantra also. Um, so can you share a bit about the actual process that you go through um, to help them with this uh, in terms of what you physically do? Um, and also, I mean, I just love what you're saying about the comparison thing. And especially for us, you know, like perfectionists by nature and high achievers. And I think many of our people who'll be watching will be like that. I mean, this is, you know, we, we like to do well. So can you share a bit about the actual yeah. process and what happens? Yeah. So, so you know, um, there's always a very con um, concrete instruction at the beginning of the, of the course, of the class. And... Sometimes um, some of them are really directly diving in and sometimes others don't feel like it. And, and it, depends, it depends on the subject. So um, when they are into it, I'm, I'm telling them, okay, just imagine that we are not here to create the best artwork that will be exhibited at the Louvre. We are here to have fun and you have to know that whatever you do, if you're not happy with it, it doesn't matter. It's just like you learn something. And if you think that you didn't follow the instruction properly or that um, it didn't correspond to what you expected, um, think twice because it's because you have expectations that you are feeling unhappy. So, I really have to remind them, even the students that I've been having for three years, I have to remind them all the time, look, you're not here to make an artwork, you're here to have fun and to really feel in your body how it feels to be creative. And if the result is nice, that's, you know, the cherry on the cake. I don't know if you say that in English, but in French we do, the cherry on the cake. We do. <laughs> and, and for some, it's, it goes even, even, even worse. It's like, I don't want to waste your pains. And I'm like, oh, the, the pain that is wasted is the one that remains in the tube. If you don't use it, I mean, what's the point? 
And you know that it's it's because it's the way that we've been raised, right? I mean, the the, ne the next generation, the ones that follow us, they don't have that issue. They are like really, they go all full on and, and they play. But people our, our age, it's so ingrained in who we are. And um, and even, you know, they, they've, now they, they joke about it and they, they kind of say, who has the palm tonight, you know, like the best student. And, and even if they joke about it, it gives me like, mm, I don't like that. <laughs> oh. it's not about being the best one. It's really about, you know, feeling what it is. And and also when they they tend to go where they are the most comfortable, you know, they pick up the colors that they like, or they could they pick up the tool that they are most used to. And I say to them, no, now I'm going to impose the colors to you. And and I and I on purpose choose the colors that they never pick. And they're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then I give them the process, and at the end of the, the class, they realize that it wasn't so frightening after all, that they made something they liked, that they learned something, and that actually what was really beautiful for them is to discover, you know? It's like when you go to a, to a, a game park, you discover each time. And I bet that you, when you go to game parks, even if you do the parks very well, I mean, it's always a new discovery. And that feeling, I mean, it's it's a bit like adrenaline, you know? You want to have that again and again, right? And and I do have the same, and I want to transmit that to my students. And, and some of them really come back because they want to experience that. It's amazing. I love that. And you, you, you express it so beautifully, Isa, really. I actually I almost what, I had tears in my eyes when you were talking, when you were saying they, you know, they sometimes say they don't want to waste your paint. And I've actually had that as a photographer for women to say, I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. You know, it's like, of course you're not. This is what you're here for. You know, this, mm. is, this is my job. This is like for you. Um, Chantal says, thanks for putting your name in, Chantal. She says, I didn't create besides writing for many years. And there was always a feeling of emptiness inside. Exactly, Chantal, mm -hmm. me too. She says, I now try to draw and paint or even just crochet occasionally. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. More and more ladies I see doing crochet yeah. um, as it makes me feel alive. Exactly. And she says, I feel many people are missing some sort of creative outlet. And that's why they suffer from depression. I can relate to that also, Chantal. Um, we need it. Love what Isa is saying. You can be angry before you start. You can be angry before you start creating. But once you start to get lost, and then life is better when you stop. I can't yeah. agree with you more. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost like stepping out of time. Yeah. And what you, what, yeah, what you said as well, Isa, you mentioned game parks. Yeah, to crocheting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my other ladies said that. Okay. Um, and what you remind me of, I don't know if you heard my, my live stream with Anya, who's the safari guide, uh, mm -hmm. the soul safari guide for women. And she is so in touch with this. So so she takes women on individual, to, well, they can come individually and join group tours of just women. And her one of her main focuses is to get them, shift them out of their comfort zone. And to do quite daring things and even a bit of adrenaline things, you know, um, so like water ra river rafting and what, whatever, mm. and like love um, interactions with cheetah and things like that, that you would just adore. And it's, it's that same thing of moving out of your comfort zone. And like with writing, like Chantal mentions writing, you know, when you get faced with a blank page, the same with photography, every shoot, it's brand new, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. So it's that stepping into the unknown, which is just yeah. amazing. But can we touch on this? Because Chantal's also mentioned the depression. And I think that's very commonplace. I mean, and also the the stress that's kind of related as well with, with lives, especially at the moment, as we know it. And your experience of, of coming through Bonart, uh, because that was also very moving to hear about. And thank you for sharing that so vulnerably, Isa. So can I ask you to just speak a little more around that, around addressing the burnout, the depression, the, the stress relief, and how you help women through that? I'd yeah. love to for you to share. Yeah, and I want to 
to to go back to what Chantal says, um, it makes her feel alive. You know, when I when I spoke earlier about um, the the balance between the skills, the, the your skills, your needs, and your values. Um, in my case, one of my basic needs is to to create, is to paint. Uh, for some other people, it's it's not a need; it's just a nice to have. And for for, for people who don't um, have that same need, it's very difficult to understand. Uh, when I say I need to paint, like I need to drink water, it's it's exactly the same thing. I mean, it's some it's a non-negotiable. But it's only now, at 50 something, that I discovered that it was a non-negotiable for me. So it took me 50 years of depression episodes, challenges, uh, traumas, whatever, to get back to what what is it that you actually need. And that's why I thought that it was really important to um, communicate that to other women, to share that with other women. Um, because if you're not aware of what you need, you will go through different kind of um, substitutes, you know, to make up for that need that is not fulfilled until you either get sick or you you know you reach the wall and you you ask yourself what is it that i'm going to do and i'm totally convinced because i've been there that if you open the door to what what needs to be addressed in you in terms of what your soul needs that you are then accelerating your healing process if you are stressed, if you are burned out, if you are depressed. And it's it goes without saying that you need proper health care, you need uh, medical support, uh, holistic support, whatever, you do need that. But I can assure you that if you have a creative outlet, then you will recover a lot faster and your healing process will last fine like forever you won't fall back again into what what has brought to you to stress or to your depression or to your burnout so yeah so that's why i i created i just created recently um a mini online course that is called stress free in 10 and that is meant for people who really need to unwind after a long day of work or that are feeling that stress is slowly but surely creeping into their lives. And it teaches you how to carve out 10 minutes, 10 minutes of your time every day to doodle. And I can tell you that after just one week of 10 minutes a day, you are another person. And this is this is wonderful because you can do that without being you know with an artistic background even if you think that you are not a creative person you can do it and um it's it's an amazing thing to be able to you know to to have that tool that you can do anywhere with just a pencil or just a piece of paper and that will um release release your stress because it's it's um, it's mindful activity. This is something that we didn't talk a lot, uh, Naomi, but I want to to, to have a word about, um, you know, the scientific studies that prove that creativity is good for your health. Um, because uh, when you are engaging into a creative outlet, you are using another part of your brain which is your right brain, and you are actually creating new neural pathways. And the more you are doing that, the more your brain will expand. And um, this will translate into new ideas, new landscapes, new ways of seeing things for you. 
so that's why it's very important to make a habit of your creative um, outlet. And as I said, it can be flower arrangement, it can be crochet, it can be writing, anything. But if you make it a habit, and for people who say, I don't have time, I mean, 10 minutes a day, it's all it takes. I love this, Isa. I really do. And I want to say hi to Talana because she joined us. I see it was you, Talana, who said yay to the crocheting. Yeah. Because and I saw something that you crocheted the other day. And you were also saying very vulnerably, hey, it's not perfect, but here we go. I'm starting. And I love that. I actually haven't crocheted since I was a girl. I used to when I was young and knitting. Um, and then Chantal, yeah. And then Chantal also says, age is a blessing as we find it finally realize what we want and need and we do as Isa says know what is a non-negotiable in our lives I totally agree with you I, I'm so um, I'm so what's the word like fiercely protective of my creative time um, it's actually yeah it's so important and and then she says love what you're doing Isa I love it too and this I'm so enchanted by this course that you do Isa because exactly like you say so it's something we can do practically and very quickly and yeah. get in that habit so ladies if you're watching you know I just had this flash across my mind with all of you here and I was just thinking it would be so nice for us to be sitting in some beautiful resort one of these days having like a beautiful live session together I, mean. I, hope, I hope we can yeah I hope we can <laughs> Um, and so there we've dropped the we've dropped the um, website address at the bottom. Okay, so stress free in ten. And then is if I can ask you once we wrap up, we're not finished yet. There's more to say. Um, if you can drop that below the video, whoever wherever you're watching, you'll be able to see that. Um, and is a it will be wonderful. I'd love to see. I'd love to join it myself actually, and then see uh, those of you who are keen to join. Um, it's just such a fascinating concept and it's something different that I haven't done before. So um, I love that. Okay, so let me just move on from that and ask you, can you share a couple of stories or do you have a story from your clients, your students um, and any breakthroughs that they've had with regard to really getting in touch with their creativity? Yeah, yeah, well, um, there's actually one story that I really love and, um, and that was one of the very rare men in my courses oh. and a very young one, less than 30 years old. Um, and you, I'm thinking of him and man, just like my heart is, is big when I'm thinking of him. It's, he came to the course um, because we had met on, on a Christmas market and he was interested in my paintings. And so he decided to come to one of my workshops where I teach acrylic pouring. And um, he was fascinating because he would listen to the, um, you know, to the instructions and then he would go the total opposite way. And I let him do, I let him do his stuff because it was, so inventive and exploring and and that's what he said i mean he said i only have that opportunity to learn that technique so i probably won't do it anymore after that so i'm going full on and 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 i'm just exploring and after that he totally changed from job and he went to new zealand to learn uh, gardening landscape landscape gardening and and I think he's still there. And that was like two years ago. Oh, and wow. it's uh, that's that's a total change. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I but, love that. But you know, it's it's that generation that is really uh, aware of the, all the uh, issues with with our planet. And the thing is that he he just decided like that. Um, and and that's. It, it can happen. I mean, all the transformations are not that radical, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but there, was, there was also this woman who had just gone into uh, her retirement age and she, she loved to do Ikebana um, flower arrangements. And, and she, she said, yeah, it's, it's really nice. But the thing is that it's, it's ephemeral, you know, it, and it's, it doesn't last and she came she came to the workshops and she said not only is it 
nice because we get to create paintings that we can hang to our walls, but also the feeling that we get is lasting because we, we feel like we were kids again. And that is exactly what we lack because, because of all, you know, the all life, life gets in the way anyway, but being able to know that, okay, I can do that technique and get back to that feeling. And, um, and when I see those people again, they always say, I want to come back. And I'm saying, well, you've learned everything that is to be learned. You know, it doesn't matter. I want to come back. Yes. Oh, I love that, Isa. Because it's exactly what you're saying. It's about that feeling. It's yeah. all about the feeling. And I just want to say Chantal also says, I'm in. I love it, Chantal. Yay. So this live retreat, it's got to happen yeah. somewhere one of these days, baby. <laughs> I love it. Um, is it so we, we've just got 10 minutes and I'd love for you to share a bit about your new collection because I've been watching on Instagram and I followed when you did when you launched it and I just love your work and I love the inspiration that you share around it. Can I ask you to share a bit about that with our viewers about what inspires your your painting and your collections and the meaning and the purpose and all of that because it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, my last collection is um, it's a collection of 10 paintings that I called the golden hour. Um, so it's, my inspiration comes, as you might have understood, my inspiration comes from my, my battles, from the challenges that I have had and the, the feelings that I need to express. And in the past, what I painted was really um, kind of, um, you know, venting my anger on on canvas and now it's really different because because of all the you know the work that we've done the course that we've been through and i found that the golden hour not only is it the most beautiful time of the day but it has also this specific um meaning to it that is Every day you have golden hour in the morning, golden hour in the evening, and next day it comes back, and the day after that it comes back. So there's this cycle of beautiful moments that are really unique and and that you cannot grasp, but are that, that are coming back. And it's about also being aware that, for example, our thoughts our life challenges might sometimes be heavy, dark, but there's always a golden hour that comes back. Um, there's always, you know, a new day. And we can also decide for ourselves to change our thoughts. Um, just like we see you know, at the golden hour, the, the light is changing so quickly that you can see that with the different colors in the skies. We can do that. We can do the same with our souls. And that was really my inspiration and my, my yeah, what I wanted to express in the last collection is that whatever ha I have been through in the last years with burnouts, depressions, and so on, um, it's up to me to create the life that I want. And so that's what I wanted to express in my paintings. And I wanted to express that in ways of colors. As you said, it's very vibrant and, and very colorful. And also with the symbol that you see on the painting, this elongated O, which is also the symbol of the cycle, the cycle of, you know, the things that go and come back and go and come back, just like the golden hour. Ah, oh, so beautiful, is I love it. And so for those watching as well, you, you do different sizes of paintings and are they available? Do, do you do also kind of for, for commercial sales and then do you sell internationally? How does that all work? Yeah, well, as you might uh, know that the exhibitions have been uh, a bit uh, halted the last month. So I'm still waiting for um, an exhibition to take place at the end of this year. Um, I love to paint on very large sizes. Uh, my canvases are like 
the minimum size is 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Do you, do you count in centimeters metric system? Yes, we do. Yes, okay. we do. Yeah. And um, so that's that and bigger. Um, but I also started recently painting on paper on smaller sizes and you can find uh, my canvases on my website and my uh, smaller paintings on my Instagram account mm -hmm. and website too. Oh, wonderful. And would you give us those details, Isa, yeah. just so that I everybody can find you? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. Well, oh, wonderful. Okay. And I love your idea. I know this is quite a new idea, but of painting onto clothing and yeah. on onto black sneakers. I love that. That well, just looks amazing. That's a spoiler, Naomi. <laughs> okay. That's what? It's a spoiler. That's, that's a spoiler. I'm not allowed to say that. I'm sorry. Okay, well, it's like, consider it a teaser. Consider it a teaser. Because I think it's going to yeah. be amazing. It's exploring. Um, it's still, I'm still exploring because it's, I realized that um, painting on a, on a, a dress is totally something else than painting on a okay. canvas when you paint on a canvas it's the artwork when you paint on a clothes you have to magnify the clothes and not transform the clothes <laughs> in a canvas you know? I mean, yeah, true. it would be different and you don't want yeah. to lose the woman as well you want to you want to enhance the woman and not lose her yeah amazing so is it we, we're coming up to the hour we've got yeah. just a couple of moments so i wanted to ask is there anything fun any final thoughts that you'd like to share inspirations you'd like to leave our beautiful audience with um yeah. can i yeah give you that well, opportunity? we talked about it and i i think that i want i want women to really um embody the fact that we need to be nurturing, but we definitely need to be rainbow women too. And for that, that means that we have to set up non-negotiables in our life, that we let that know to the people that are in our lives that we have those times and those activities that are non-negotiable because they are indispensable to our to our well-being. And I think that the first step that I will recommend doing is to make something very unusual to start oh. being creative. Like if you go to if you go to work with a specific route, just take another route. If you are used to eating um, Japanese food, try Peruvian food. Just really do something totally out of your usual landscape and just get to discover new things that's beautiful such great advice i love it yay so ladies all of you watching i want to say big thank you and i hope you'll take that to heart and please share with us what you do something different yeah. because you can give us all ideas yeah that's magic Thank you so much, Isa. It's been so magic to be with you. I really appreciate your time. And I'm so excited for you, for, for all of your beautiful artwork and your courses going forward. And I just wish you all the best. And thanks to all of you watching, whether you are with us live, as I said, or watching the replay, it's been wonderful to be with you. And lots of Thank love to you, you all. And Thank you, Naomi. It was a pleasure for me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And um, yeah, keep keep in touch and uh, give me some heads up if you are feeling also like a, a rainbow woman. Oh, thank you, Isa. And Nikki says such an inspiration. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, ladies. You. Yes, I'm feeling the rainbow woman. I, I also feel that in community, we help each other bring out our rainbow women. And I just love that. I think it's so powerful. So thanks again. So special to be with you. Thank you. Thank Take you. Take care, everybody.